الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله ذي الملك والملكوت ذي العزة والجبروت الحمد لله حي قيوم لا ينام عزيز لا يضام قهار لا يرام وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما يقول الباري سبحانه وتعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون May Allah سبحانه وتعالى guide us to the way of Islam and bestow upon us the gift to die on a state of Islam as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us in the ayah that I have just recited and in its meaning in English all you who believe fear Allah as he should be feared and die not except on a state of Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in surah al-hijri and indeed addressing to every believer believing in Allah and the hereafter. And in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describing a people that they made out of the obscenity a structure of the society or one of the pillars to construct a whole society. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah, قَالَ لَعَمْرُكَ إِنَّهُمْ لَفِي سَكْرَتِهِمْ يَعْمَهُمْ لَعَمْرُكَ And this is at this corner they said, uh, venerating and honoring the Prophet Sallallahu that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in this ayah he made an oath and qasam by the life of the Prophet Sallallahu he said by your life these people are in their sakra intoxication ya'mahoon wandering blindly and this is Subhanallah the situation of the Qawm Lut as we see exactly the same today and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Surah Al-Baqarah how people, they will be following each other or succeeding each other based on their heart. قَالَ تَشَابَهَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Their hearts look alike. And the Prophet sallallahu when he was talking about the one who was questioning the, uh, the, the judgment of the Prophet sallallahu قَالَ سَيَخْرُجُ مِنْ ضِئْذِ إِهَاذَ He's going to come out from the like of this person, people who you belittle your own salat, you know, uh, you know, compared to their salat, and so on. And the Prophet said, if I'll be when these people that come out, I will be the first to strive and subhanAllah against them. And this is subhanAllah the same thing. It's the same thing. How someone seeing things that happening that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defined in the Quran. So nobody will say that we do not have any element of guidance to help us understand what is going on. And this whole campaign of subhanAllah normalization of obscenity, of subhanAllah type of erasing the virtue and make it something that part of the society or part of one subhanAllah feeling or part of some behavior and conduct to be normalized and accepted. This is dear brother, respected sister, is not a matter that is about, you know, just fulfilling one's desire or indulge in one subhanAllah thing to satisfy their own instinct. It's more than that. It's greater than that. And to be only that is already one of the greatest major sins that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned and his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has, you know, clarified. So when we talk about such a thing, it's really threatening the very existence of the humankind and corrupting the whole universe. Many people, they will be shocked, but this is the way how we look at it in Islam, because this is the view of the divine, the view and the worldview that has been described in the Quran for us just to understand it. And if you are truly believer, you have to embrace it and adhere to it. And try also to do like uh, Lut alayhi salam. And we have the great example for this case in Lut alayhi salam. When he addressed his people, قَالَ وَإِنِّي لِعَمَلِكُمْ لَمِنَ الْقَالِينَ I, from those to what you're doing for this obscenity, I am from al qalin from those who despise it, abhor such a thing. And this is dear brother, respected sister, is in a pan the believer to keep in his heart and her heart such despise to this action. Because 
when it goes, subhanAllah, to be desensitized, what is going to go after it is to lose your own iman. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He described the believer and He complimented them, Qala, the best we, you have been the best nation that being subhanAllah produced to the humanity. No, because you know, uh, because how you look like or your color, no, because you enjoy good and you forbid evil and you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the interpretation of this ayah that you in the beginning you will not be able to enjoy good and forbid evil if you don't have a belief in Allah. But how comes that the belief in Allah comes after enjoying good and forbid evil? Because what maintains, safeguard, preserve your faith, your iman, is the enjoining of the good and the forbidden of the evil. Which is me, like when you enjoy something good because you love the good, you are driven toward the good to establish it and to want to be it, subhanAllah, around you. But when you see something that is immoral, something evil, you have to despise it. So you still have life in your heart. For this reason, the Prophet Sallallahu he said, when you see an immorality, when you see something, an evil thing, you have to change it. If you cannot change it with your hand, if you cannot change it, stop it by your words. You just change it with your heart, how you despise it. You do not let it to get into your system. And if it does, then it will take away the iman from your heart. So this is the situation, as you see it, subhanAllah, today how people making, as the people of Lut, the whole society all came together, subhanAllah, to rush to the door of the house of, of Lut, alayhi salam. This is when you study it and you try to reflect on it, you find that the whole society has been immersed in this immorality. The whole society becomes, is a tradition. And today, subhanAllah, the campaign of normalization to have a whole mouth of pride. Pride of what? Pride for indecency, pride for immorality, pride for obscenity, pride of degradation of the quality and the dignity of human being to below, to below the state of the cattle because the cattle they are guided and they are follow their inner nature in their life. But when someone corrupt his own inner nature, what are you going to classify him? For this is, dear brother, respect and sister, is a very serious topic. And it's very serious because the believer, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the ayah that I have mentioned, afterward what he said, قَالَ إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِلْمُتَوَسِّمِينَ This is our guidance and this is our sign is for people who are mutawassimun. Who are the mutawassimun? The mutawassimun who reflect, who ponder, who think, when they see things, they subhanAllah signs, they don't let it go and they don't neglect it and they don't subhanAllah and not pay attention to it. They will subhanAllah dig to see what is the impact of such a thing on your virtue, on your purity, on your children, on the community around you, on the whole humankind around you. This is the ayat al mutawassimin And then qala wa innaha la bisabil al muqim and this town, this city that has been subhanAllah destroyed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said after that قَالَ وَإِنَّهَا لَبِسَبِيلُ الْمُخِيمُ How many planes they cross and they go on top of this land and how many people they travel and tourists they go to see it. And then he said after that إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَةً لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Again and this is an ayah as a sign for the believers. So a believer is required to be from the mutawassimeen and to preserve his belief by reflecting on such a thing. So when you look at this situation and you try to study the society of Lut alayhi salam would they get to the peak of the immorality by making this immorality one of the pillar of the society because you will be like subhanAllah shocked how even the wife of Lut alayhi salam was contributing to let know the people of, uh, of Lut alayhi salam about his guests have you not forbid you before to protect anyone. So Lut alayhi salam, any stranger or traveler who comes to his town, he will be subhanAllah subject to attack from these people. Why? Because this is their nature. Now, now we have to understand your brothers, but it says that we so like nature that these people like beasts or these people like subhanAllah, they only think about, you know, this uh, subhanAllah, this obscenity, this action of, of subhanAllah, of obscene action. No. Dear brother, respect and sister, this is a creed, this is a faith, this is a belief. So do not treat the thing 
And subhanAllah is an action, an immoral action. No, it's an immoral creed. And I will show you with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is an idolatry. This is a religion based on idolatry. And it is. So imagine subhanAllah and just to, to subhanAllah to envisage and visualize a society that is based in this immorality. Where the whole society come together to really accept it. To really accept it. So the, the structure of the society becomes built on, on things, on this radil, on this obscenity, which is mean there is no haya. You are erasing the modesty. You are erasing the sense of shyness into this society. You are erasing the purity. You are erasing the chastity. You are erasing the virtue. You are erasing, in fact, you are erasing, in fact, the mizan, the balance, to make the distinction between the good and evil, between right and wrong. This is the society, how it looks like when you have one of its structure that has been embraced and become normalized, this obscenity. So it's something, subhanAllah, is big. For this reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala khala innahum fi sakratihim. A sakrat, dear brother, being intoxicated, they didn't, you know, consuming any drugs here, but they have been intoxicating by the pleasure that they are seeking. And the pleasure they are seeking through, subhanAllah, going astray, through immorality, to the, to the way that it took away their mind, it took away their reasoning. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala fahum la yakhilun, they could not even reason, they could not even understand. Qala summun bukmun umyun, these people are deaf and deaf, subhanAllah, and blind. فهم لا يعقلون they will not be able to reason why because this intoxication of pleasure in the intoxication of the thing that they indulge themselves in it take away their ability of reasoning and which lead them subhanallah to wandering blindly so they don't have any any subhanallah any any direction except what is being dictated by their own whims and desire for this reason, Ya'mahun, if you try to understand and uh, so, uh, the depth meaning of Ya'mahun, it means that people, they have a corrupted basir. They do not have any insight. The insight, which is the light inside, to help someone directed and guided in life, is being erased. Therefore, confusing will be, subhanAllah, people undecided, confused. They do not have a sense of direction. This, what it means, fi sakratim Ya'mahun. So when you study the way of the Qur'an and you PC on these people who are the successor of the people of Qawm Lut, you understand that this pride that they're claiming is really, uh, subhanAllah, a big, a big indecency and is, is the transgression against the whole humanity. Wallahi, this is the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we need to be very careful. Because some people, they might justify to say, you know, we are like, you know, this is the freedom. Everyone has his uh, freedom and we are in society that we fought for in our emancipation of our freedom of speech, of our freedom of doing. Said, subhanAllah, don't be from those who are corrupted inside. No. The way of Quran to say, Inni I despise this action. I despise this path. I despise the campaign because it's going to ruin the whole humankind. So when, uh, when people, they do such a thing, and they subhanAllah, they compare it to the freedom of religion. Nothing have to do. And this is subhanAllah, someone will be like naive. Someone subhanAllah becomes like he's not reasoning at all to accept it in that way. So the question is, how can we understand, you know, how big is this is matter? How can we really grasp, you know, the importance and how threatening is this situation? How, subhanAllah, will we understand it in a way to strengthen our, subhanAllah, heart and to increase our understanding? to really maintain the despise toward this action. And be careful, not talking about despise people, despise this action. And despise the campaign to normalize this action. And make it to be part of the society that subhanAllah. And look, now the law is enforcing such a thing. 
And we have, we have a parents that really been hurt. And they were like, you know, kind of, you know, trying to do things and standing against it. And some of the school, they sent someone here and we were talking to them. And one of the things he said, will you allow, for example, for the people who are there to the Christian faith to teach their Bible, or for us as a Muslim to teach the Quran, or for people who are there to Judaism to teach, you know, their book, of course not, because you are there to a secular system. How can you then, you allowing such a religion to be taught to our children? Because it's not an action, it's a religion, it's a faith, as we want to explain it. And then when you see the people of Lut, how all of them, they came, as I said, it's not people because they're beasts and they're looking for pleasure. It's something they defend. This is their tradition. This is their way of living. This is the way how they construct their society. This is how, subhanAllah, they believe. And there is, subhanAllah, the fundamental or the principle of this action, of this campaign, of what the people of Lut and their successor in the time of today, in this modern time, what they base their, subhanAllah, belief on. We summarize in five points to help us understand the gravity of the situation. The first point, dear brother, respect and sister, is that the aqidah, the creed that is followed, is a secular creed, materialistic creed. What does it mean? Point by point, it's very important for us because we have to help ourselves, help our children. There is no Chinese in the deen. You sit with your children and explain to them. Because they have been given as a law to come to the libraries, to come to the common public situation, or they come to, to a, a boy and said, you know, you are a boy, but you can be a girl. What morality in this? What teaching in these things? Except, subhanAllah, to destroy the psychology of this kid. To confuse these kids. So the first thing, subhanAllah, we have to understand, the first point. All this campaign is based on a creed of secular creed, what does it mean? It means they exclude the deity from life and they exclude the creator from the universe. No ilah, no rabb, no God in your life. You do whatever you want. You don't want to be dictated by God. Let's cancel the God. No khaliq, no creator in the universe. Therefore, what is the source to know how to know the truth? How we get to the truth, how we understand the realities, how we understand the haqiqah is only through our reason and the sensory that we have. The ability that we have in our sensory faculties. So subhanAllah then we are excluded. Then the explanation of all the things that you see around us are done by science. What about what beyond this, this life is done by reason? So here we became like the man, the human being, became he's the center of the universe. He's the master of the universe. He's an arrogant and someone who decides and dictates the, 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 the future. And he has telling you that I have the key of the future thanks to the science of techno and the technology. And this arrogance of Allah, when no one into themselves, they do not have anything. They do not have any power. Because when a tsunami hit, they cannot do anything. Once if Allah hurricane hit, they cannot do anything. And all of us, we lived here, old and young and adult, all of us, we lived the experience of the, of the subhanAllah, the, the, the pandemic. They could not do anything. So this creed makes subhanAllah a person to be arrogant, centered, auto-centered, and he is the master of the universe, master of yourself. The second point, this is the first point, is aqidah. No ilah. No creator, nothing. So the source of the good and the source of the of subhanAllah to shield yourself from the evil is yourself. This is the first point. The second point. The second point when we come to this instant, you know, this subhanAllah, the instant that we have, the instant of you know this intimate relation is being in Islam uh, have its view and its view is associated to our nature of a human being a noble nature and dignified nature of a human being, but also is associated to the worldview. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Ar-Rum, 
قال ومن آياته from his great miracle and signs that he created out of you your own mates so you can dwell to them to find peace in them to find tranquility look Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala خلق لكم he created so we have the creator and we have the purpose of the creation is the second is the tranquility is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving you as enjoyment in this life to have it with your own mate to build the household and he made between you mawadda love and kindness warahma and mercy from Allah indeed in this are signs for people who understand and after the ayah after it he subhanallah put in the same level of this great miracle the creation of the heaven of the earth so the world view in the Quran to see this relationship this intimate relationship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had subhanallah the instant for us to have that drive for it is within a high objective is within high objective to preserve the humankind to preserve the future generation and with the morality and with the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you will be able to achieve the well-being in the whole universe However, in the system of today, the world, those who adhere to the materialistic creed, they look at it, they dissociate it from its high objective. They dissociate it from its humanian nature to become something like, subhanAllah, materialistic. It's only seeking the pleasure into, subhanAllah, an itar, into in a perspective, materialistic perspective. Therefore, it becomes like satisfying your pleasure and satisfying your desire becomes the focus here. So by dissociating it from the worldview, as we have explained in the Quran, it becomes, subhanAllah, a pleasure to indulge into it. This is the second point. So subhanAllah, then it becomes like only in material. It's like someone, you know, he's hungry, he has to fill his stomach, then he has that need, he has to do it. And then when you go, subhanAllah, you don't have any, any boundaries, you don't have any restriction, you don't have any guidance, then you turn to a person, subhanAllah, getting into all the types of the LGBT and get to the plus, to the, they get more than the whole alphabet. And then, subhanAllah, the third point, the third point, the third point is very important, look, step by step, for us to help us to understand. The believer... What is your aspiration? What is your dream? Your dream is to have the pleasure of Allah. Your dream that Allah will be pleased with you. Your dream is to be embraced by the rahmah of Allah. Your dream is to have the joy into your heart, the sweetness of the iman. The dream is to enter paradise. When you do not have a God who is going to promise you such a thing, what is the dream? The dream it becomes in a secular mind, for these people is to achieve the utopia. The utopia is the peak of a society of humankind where they have like happiness and subhanAllah everything and joy and everything. But this is, is impossible and they know it is impossible. Therefore, the dream of Ethiopia, the dream of happiness, a dream of a paradise that can be on earth, how to subhanAllah to switch it and to find a temporary, temporary dream is subhanAllah this situation is this instinct is this sex subhanallah becomes the dream where they find the pleasure so through it they're gonna have their sa'ad they're gonna have their happiness then it becomes subhanallah a center in the life of the human being through which they find their dreams they find their pleasure so the pleasure which is meaning like happiness so the happiness for someone who does not have aqidah that is believe in the divine becomes the center of it is this thing this is the third point so the Ethiopia, as they will not be attainable, is at, uh, not attainable. So it becomes, subhanAllah, the happiness that they find, they find it in this low pleasure in the last. And it becomes, subhanAllah, it becomes like this is their paradise, this is their firdaus, but on earth. Then their invitation to it is like they sincerely invite you to a true paradise. This is what they believe. Because they are anywhere of the divine, anywhere of the true belief, then this is becomes a true paradise. So sincerely and wholeheartedly they will invite you. They want to invite your kid because they believe you a believer will believe in whatever faith. You are like transgressing your kid and we are invite them to what they find their own self, to find their pleasure whenever they want. And this is what the reality, this is how is dangerous. The fourth point, dear brother, respect to sister, when they come to this point becomes what is the center then into the self. 
at the center in the universe is the human being. What is the center of the human being? Is this last. This low last becomes the center. Becomes, subhanAllah, why? Because the principle of happiness turn to be centered into something that that you want to satisfy you don't have anyone to dictate anything of you and then to satisfy your own desire it does not have here you know the higher the evil and the good this is only me why you are talking to me about such a thing i'm i'm free so subhanallah when it becomes the principle of happiness and it becomes the center as they don't have god there is no god god does not exist so the center that they hold fast to is subhanallah this last it becomes subhanallah like a worship which is comes to the fifth point your brother respect your sister by doing such a thing we are subhanallah disconnecting the human being from their past from their tradition from their own existence from their own subhanallah let's say memory of human being because when everything starts to be centered about this last, then you can bring anyone, subhanAllah. So it is becomes the high objective is to satisfy the maximum of desire, whatever you want. Like as we've told one of the brothers, he said, someone is like, subhanAllah, every day he wants to be his gender. So when you told him, for example, uh, he today, he's going to be mad because th this morning he's she. When tomorrow you tell them, she is going to be mad, today I am there. And subhanAllah, this is how people are in chaos, in debacle, in confusion. And this is how it does not have any limit. You see today, subhanAllah, how this campaign about, you know, changing of all, subhanAllah, the biological nature of a person, tomorrow you're going to see something else, it's not going to stop. Therefore, dear brother, when you look at it from this, when you are dissociated from your past, when you are dissociated from your tradition, when everything is taken away from you, who you are? What is your identity? Your identity becomes the gender that you chose. And then the problem here, there is a big difference between the gender, which is your role in the society is not, does not mean male and female. So I say, oh, that male of Ifel, this is this biological thing, nothing have to do with the gender. So my role in the society today, I see like this role of she, it's not well, you know, treated, I'm going to turn to him. It's subhanAllah immoral and it does not make any sense. For dear brother, if you understand this by making the center of the universe, the human being, an arrogant human being, and make the center of the human being is to have paradise on earth, the firdaus on earth, through the pleasure, and the pleasure is all incarnated into the lust. This is what you're going to have. What you're going to have an idolatry calling first for, for transgression, calls for israf. What well, israf? Because the gift of life, you are wasting the gift of life, the gift of mind. To seek high objective to help your humankind, the whole humankind to follow their well-being. No, you only think about your pleasure. And this is a waste. For this reason, Lut alayhi salam to say to his people, Bal antum musilfun. You are people who are going all, subhan, transgressing all bounds. You are people who are wasteful. And this deen, this religion, this campaign, which is a religion, it's a faith, is calling and inviting to ignorance. Because they reduce the whole humankind with all his faculties, with all, subhanAllah, his perspective, with all the possibilities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us to really reduce it to the body, to serve the body. So the mind, the reason, the science, the technology is all serving the body how to find this pleasure. And for this reason, Lut said, Qala bal antum qawmun tajhalun. You are people who act in an in, ignorant way. And here, subhanAllah, tajhaloon, in sighatul mudara, in sighat, the present sigha is like, you are in jahl, continuous as long as you are in this situation. And then the last one, that they are calling to transgression. Transgression of the nature of the human being. Transgression of virtues. Transgression of purity. Because purity becomes something, a disbelief. Purity becomes into their concept into their creed something to be despised of as they said all together when they gathered said exit like said 
force the exile for people to people to the family of Lut are they are indeed people who love to be purified people who want to be chaste so chastity becomes an immorality purity becomes an immorality a society when the purity is an immorality what do you think is going to happen to the society what do you think is going to happen to you or to your children for this reason as a believer as a believer you have to stand against such an action such a campaign to really preserve your iman so it's an obligation it's not something that you know some people should do it and other no this is for you for you and for your offspring and for the people dear around you and for the whole humankind aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiru al ghafur ar rahim bismillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salam ala al nabiy al mustafa amma ba'd following the path of lut alayhi salam when he said wa inni inni li amalikum la min al qali i'm indeed to word your action from those who despise it abhor this action a truly believer as a believer is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, told us about it this is the role model for us to be inspired from and to follow and as we have explained in few points the five points there is a lot of many other points but just to get the summary to really for all of us to understand the gravity of all the situation and how subhanallah it's not about the people who are enjoying their pleasure or their movement no it's about you too it's about the society you live in it's about subhanallah the creed because as you as anyone who is adhering to a faith and we're talking about the believer you want to share your belief you want to share the good that you have in your heart you want to share the beauty of islam for the same reason they want to share such a thing because they see in it beauty they see in it a reason of existence they see in it justice they see in it and they call it subhanallah they say heroic striving and you know to open all this uh, possibility and option of hope when you read their literature you see subhanallah is like true striving true jihad why because they believe in it and you as a believer following the guidance of the divine you see that these people are trapped in a dark bubble they don't see anything and they deny their own self they people who forget who they are and therefore they are as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said exactly wandering blindly intoxicated subhanallah stumble into their intoxication into blindly in everything they do not have any direction and these are the facts of the quran therefore dear brother respect to sister all of us as a believer you have really to help yourself to truly despise this action despises as a way of a belief despises for the sake of allah despises for the sake of your honoring of yourself despising does not mean that you're going to take action to be violent that's not the way of the believer but despise it to protect your iman despise it to protect your dignity despise it to protect who you are despise it to be in the path of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala despise it to protect your children you sit and your children with the people around you and to tell them especially if you remember this point to show them this is a creed this is you know a reason of existence for them is a cause that they worth strive for for them and you show that this is obscenity this subhanallah this degradation this erasing of the haya the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said what has been inherited from the with the saying of the prophethood before qala in lam tastahi fa'al ma shi'a if you do not have the sense of shyness then you can do whatever you want and this is what you say is really shocking we see an old man with a subhanallah white beard kissing another man it's something subhanallah that you cannot really understand it but when you look at this usul when you look subhanallah at this principle upon which they base their own creed you understand these people they are totally dissociated from the true life they have very corrupted inside they have a dead heart these people are deaf deaf because they don't see the truth 
And for us, it's not us we're saying this, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whatever people they say, you have to say the truth. And you're not subhanAllah just, you know, being like people who said, no, we embrace it because we respect each other. You respect them. Yes. When it comes, subhanAllah, you come to a store and someone adhering to this movement, you have to be fair. Why? Because this is transaction between you and this person. He, you give him, he give him your merchandise and you give him money. You sign and go on a contract. So it's an obligation of a, the believer to be fair and to be kind and to fulfill all his requirements in, the item, in, the, in this contract. But does not mean that you embrace what they do. You have to hate what they do. You have to abhor what they do. You have to despise it for your iman to live. And for this reason, dear brother, respect your sister, Allah said, Ya'mahoon, Ya'mahoon. It's like, there is, there is, it implies that Allah refuses to guide these people. Except those who repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these people, they're going to, subhanAllah, meet a mighty chastisement in the hereafter. And no such a thing, how can a believer incline to such a thing? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَا تَرْكَنُوا إِلَى الَّذِينَ تَرْكَنُوا Incline is like, said, no, okay, this is fine, they're okay, this is, we live in the, in the, you know, society of liberties. It is a fact, society of liberty it does not mean that you corrupt your own faith. It does not mean that you accept something that is going to corrupt your inner soul. And for this reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala قال, لا تركنوا, do not incline for those who transgress. Then it, fire will touch you. Imagine subhanahu wa ta'ala This is in the Quran. For may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us increase, have a heart that is pure. To see what the wrong as wrong and to see the truth as the truth and to love the truth and be driven toward establishing it and to hate the wrong and to be able to stop it or at least to despise it to keep the life of the heart to lie to keep the life of the iman in our heart Allahumma ya arham ar-rahimin aj'anna min ibadika al-mutawassimin Allahumma tahir qulubana min al-nifaq wa a'yunana min al-khiyana وأعمالنا من الرياء وأعمالنا من الرذيلة اللهم ارزقنا العفة يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ارزقنا الحياء يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم زد في إيماننا ربنا إننا آمنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وقنا عذاب النار وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقم الصلاة يرحمكم الله